diversity, when you bring it up, sometimes is met with guarded and it's a sensitive subject in yes. some, some cases. Maybe your thoughts on why it is a sensitive subject and why it shouldn't be something, why we shouldn't be afraid to talk about it. I know, it's, it's really a sensitive subject. In fact, one of our findings was that uh, discussion of race-related issues uh, doesn't occur on, on MIT's campus with any real um, uh, you know, ease. Uh, and in fact, uh, for faculty, it's a very rare topic. Uh, so there's a kind of silence. Uh, people are very um, uncomfortable talking about race and, and issues of race. Uh, on top of that, uh, I think that people feel that one of the greatest insults that can be given to them is the idea that they may have, exhibit racial or preferential behavior. And uh, so there's a lot of defensiveness, defensiveness about that. And I think uh, we have to be able to acknowledge that everybody comes with, with something. And uh, we're, we're all flawed human beings. But I think if we acknowledge that, then we can move forward and we can help each other learn about um, how to address some of these things. On top of that, it's important to know that um, preferential behavior doesn't mean that one is racist. It means that one is somehow sort of trained uh, to think in a certain way or to make sets of assumptions about things. And, and that's, those are things that can be addressed. So I think uh, one of the things that we need is is a safe place to be able to talk about these things without anyone feeling blamed by anyone else. Uh, on top of that, uh, being able to think more broadly about people and where people's uh, areas of excellence are, are, are going to be really important, I think, in, in moving forward. Because there are several different ways in which we can evaluate um, what a person contributes to um, a specific project or, or a specific set of ideas. Recognizing that there are new sets of perspectives that we can gain from bringing, bringing people from all over into a project or a problem uh, is something that uh, we can learn how to appreciate and uh, as we become more engaged, we, we begin to really benefit from that. And so I guess that kind of brings it back to a question I should have asked in the beginning is the importance of diversity and how does that, why do we need diversity at a university? Yeah, you know, it's incredibly important. You think of a university as a place where we learn new ideas and challenge each other. And it's very uh, difficult to imagine gaining that when everyone is, is the same. Uh, because we no longer have the opportunity to think of new ideas and perspectives, to challenge and debate and to, and to grow in that process. So um, being able to bring people with all of these different viewpoints and all of these different experiences really enriches us at a university. Uh, I think it's really important. On top of that, I think uh, we all feel that our, our nation's universities, um, they, they bring in what we call the best and the brightest. Uh, but we can't really claim that if we're losing an entire fraction of the population uh, behind. Uh, if we miss all of these opportunities to bring everyone in on the learning enterprise and uh, to turn them on to addressing the problems that are so critical to our world, uh, then we can no longer claim that we're at the top. Have you seen from this, this report was published and just the fact that that doing the report puts diversity in a big spotlight at MIT, has that kind of brought the conversation to the forefront more? It definitely has. Uh, we've had conversations uh, with our own group, with each of the school councils, and we've had Department heads asked us to come and visit their faculty and uh, to talk about it among the faculty. Uh, we've had some very interesting conversations. People have been very frank. Mm -hmm. I think that scientists and engineers have a tendency toward that. So when people feel, disagree, they speak openly, and it gives us a chance to talk about it. Uh, let's talk about what your concern really is and whether this is really uh, something that we are um, uh, threatening or not. And I think in, in talking about it, people come to realize that this actually isn't so bad. I can see this. Have you noticed, um, have other schools, um, peer institutions even, contacted you as the chair or MIT to kind of start a dialogue with your findings? And yes, they have. We've gotten contacted by a few different universities, actually, uh, who have asked for copies of the report, who have asked specific details about how we conducted the study, because they're interested in doing a similar study. We've gotten comments from uh, some of the university uh, provost and presidents saying, you know, we're really glad that this work was done and, 
and we'd like to be able to use this to leverage some action at our own institution. So that we're very excited about. Um, on top of that, we've also heard from uh, a number of student groups, which is interesting, who are um, uh, very interested in, in, in becoming more active. I think that's important because this is our, our new generation coming in.